What it do? Welcome to another new episode of Locked On Bucks. On today's show, the Milwaukee Bucks are now 3-0 coming out of All-Star break after beating the breaks off of the Hornets 123-85. to That is a 38-point victory, the largest margin of victory of the season for the Milwaukee Bucks. We're going to take a look at how the Bucks were able to win this game, take a look at the rest of the Eastern Conference standings, what stood out to us, and salute a Buck moving up in the history books on today's episode of Locked on Bucks. You are Locked on Bucks, your daily Milwaukee Bucks podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Bucks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Camille Davis, and you can catch me weekly on the Technical File Podcast, the Pack-A-Day Podcast, as well as Cheesehead TV's Carry the G and MKE during the NFL season. Joining me is Frank Madden, longtime voice of the pod and the founder of BrewHoop.com. We appreciate you for tuning in, and thank you for making Locked On Bucks your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, as well as on YouTube. And I must take this time for just a little housekeeping. Uh, We recently switched over our podcast service provider. We have been having some troubles um, uploading the audio version to your Apple, your Spotify, but we are working on it. In the meantime, keep tapping in with us on YouTube until we get that figured out. But we are working on it. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Frank, tonight the story with the Bucks happens to be the defense again. That has to be the leading story after watching a game like this. In the second quarter, the Hornets went on an eight-minute, 26-second scoreless streak. They only scored 10 points in the entire second quarter, 16 in the first quarter. The Bucks holding the Hornets to 26 points in the first half is the lowest point total uh, at the half in the NBA this season. Like, the Bucks' defense was outstanding once again to a level that I didn't know they could even reach. Like, we've seen them beat the Hornets by – 30, (laughs) like it's been consistent so far this season, 31 the first time, then 36, now 38. I didn't know that they could even climb to this level at this point. Yeah, I mean, for better or worse, well, mostly worse, uh, the Bucs have often played down to to their opponent this season. They've, um, I mentioned it the other day, they have the third best record and winning percentage against teams in the top 10 by net point differential. Um, they have, I think, the third, if I recall correctly, the third best defense in those types of games. So you'd say, well, so why are the Bucks not, you know, near the top of the standings? Well, Camille, obviously the answer is they haven't been great against the lesser teams. And, you know, the defense is 25th uh, against teams in the bottom 10 by point differential. Obviously, the Hornets are one of those teams that have struggled for much of the season. And, you know, the two prior games that we saw were not games that the Bucks struggled in against lowly competition. The Hornets, for whatever reason, uh, seem to be the the one bad team that the Bucks have consistently uh, just wrecked. And I say that uh, knowing that we have another game coming up in two days against the Hornets. So, um, you know, I feel like I'm putting myself out in the middle of a rainstorm here and a thunderstorm, just asking to be hit by lightning uh, on Thursday night. So Bucks, don't make me look bad. Take care of business in Charlotte on Thursday. Do what you need to do. You don't necessarily need to win by 38. You know, I'll, I'll take 15 or something like that. Um, but yeah, for whatever reason, the the Hornets um, have been a team that obviously the Bucks have have not had any of those issues with. And it should be noted, the Hornets had won five or six games coming yeah. into this. I mean, this is not um, this is not a team that has been playing poorly. This is not you know like the Wizards or you know some of these teams that you know have just been kind of mailing it in. The Hornets did seem to get a little bit of extra juice uh, coming out of the trade deadline and some of the moves that they made. Um, so uh, obviously, again, that that doesn't mean that, you know, the 96 Bulls just rolled into town or something like that. But the Hornets have been playing better basketball. This isn't a team that, you know, again, you could just take for granted that you're going to win by, you know, lead the game by 45 points for, for most of the night, which is where things were for quite a while. I was a little bit annoyed that the Hornets decided to finally make some threes. I think like, what was it? Bryce McGowan's hit like a logo three 
in the fourth <laughs> fourth quarter, it's like, eh, come on, like Davis Bertans, come on, now you got to start hitting some threes, like get out of here, man. But um, in spite of you know some garbage time work to uh, to make it. 38 points respectable Camille I don't know no not really Mm -mm. um maybe make it slightly less pathetic um I was I was I was definitely holding out a little bit of hope that they could push the lead to close to 50 which is where it was um for a lot of that kind of end of third quarter and the fourth quarter but um but yeah I mean again the Hornets just missed an absolute ton of shots but I think you just have to give the Bucks credit you know they I think were energetic defensively they challenged shots they you know ran them off the three-point line um, and the interior defense I thought was really good again and um, just consist- consistently play after play just forced Hornets into taking shots that they just didn't look comfortable taking. So um, I just checked Bucks defense since uh, the firing of Adrian Griffin, now third in the league, tied for second, actually, correction, tied for second with the Cleveland Cavaliers um, since, uh, since the departure of Adrian Griffin. So the offense, you know, has not been as good tonight Everything looked just fine on Sunday. Everything looked just fine in Philly. So uh, hopefully that is beginning to come around. And um, not surprisingly, the offense looking way better with Damian Lillard looking in control, in command, knocking down three-pointers, looking comfortable, um, mm-hmm. and getting to his spots. Obviously, that's you know probably the, the best news that we've seen uh, in this post-All-Star break period, given that I think, you know, Dame's been kind of the bellwether for this team in many ways. Giannis does what he's going to do every night. And then especially with Chris out, um, yeah. you know, what you get from Dame is is really kind of the swing boat in terms of whether this team is going to look like the contender that we think it should be or a team that is going to disappoint and not always be able to take care of business against even the likes of, of teams like Charlotte or Memphis, um, et cetera. So, um yeah, I'm just good to come home and do what you need to do. And now, obviously, the task is to to kind of keep it rolling with a back to back coming up at the end of the week with the Hornets again and then the Bulls. Yeah, absolutely. And I love that you mentioned Dame and his offensive firepower that we've seen over the last couple of games here. One thing that really stood out to me in this blowout win uh, was just that Dame Giannis alley-oop connection seems to be developing a bit more. We're used to Chris being the main guy who's feeding Giannis on the lobs, but seeing Dame throw him up um, and Giannis connecting on him, it's been more frequent over the last few games, I would say as well, just the two of them trying to get that connection going. And Doc's talked so much about getting Dame going, getting Dame going, getting Dame comfortable. But he's also mentioned getting the two of them comfortable working together. Uh, And there was an article that came out today, I believe it was with Chris Haynes, uh, featuring just Damian Lillard and how he's been feeling and how things have been going. And he mentioned like, you know, I thought that we might be coming out and looking like how the Celtics are looking, where there's no... There's no like gaps. There's no learning curve. We just hit the ground and we're running. He's like, but the reality of it is new coaching staff, not just for me, but for the guys on the team as well. They had to adjust to we're all adjusting to that and trying to figure things out. But I love seeing the oops connecting between the two of them. And then just a random garbage time thing, since Doc Rivers is so insistent upon point guard Pat Connaughton. Seeing Pat Connaughton um, out there in garbage time in the fourth quarter where all the other starters and main rotational pieces were on the bench. He's still out there running point uh, for this team, which was really interesting to me. I'm like, I wonder what you're trying to tell me, Doc, with you insisting on this uh, point guard Pat Connaughton thing being a thing. So, Frank, I would love to hear if there was anything that stood out to you from this blowout win once we come back after this break. This next segment is brought to you by our sponsor, BetterHelp. Sometimes we all need the opportunity to get something off of our chest, whether it's big or small, certain things can really start to get to you. So it's important to let that out, especially to someone who's unbiased on your life. So today I wanna say how I really feel about something. You might even be thinking about the same thing this week with how the Bucks have been looking because how can people look at this Bucks team and not realize how getting Chris Middleton back is going to make them even better? I'm still seeing the people saying, get rid of Chris Middleton, figure out a way to trade him, put him on the bench. I just don't understand it. But listen, <laughs> therapy can be different for everyone. And most of us, including myself, have bigger problems than our favorite sports team. And it's important to be able to get those bigger things off of your chest every once in a while. So if you've been thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. 
So visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnNBA to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOnNBA. You know that instant confidence boost that you can get from an outfit that makes you look really good, like really, really good when you look in the mirror and you just know that you that you the one today. That's what I get with Stitch Fix. You can easily upgrade your wardrobe this year with a professional stylist that helps you find new and on-trend favors that will work for you. Stitch Fix makes it so easy. Personally, I'm not a big shopper. I don't like to shop. When I do shop, it's all at one time and then I don't do it again for months. But with Stitch Fix, they save me time and effort. And plus, I get outfits that make me look and feel really good. I just give my stylist my size and my budget preferences. I order boxes when I want and how I want. There is no required subscription, which I love. And they send me five just for me pieces, plus outfit recommendations and pro styling advice, which I can't lie to y'all. I be needing. So I keep what works and I send back the rest. Style that makes you feel as good as you look. Get started today at stitchfix.com slash locked on. That's stitchfix.com slash locked on. Stitchfix.com slash locked on. Once again, make sure you guys go and check that out. As always, we're going to take this time just to say how much I appreciate you for tuning in to Locked On Bucks. Special shout out to everyone who tunes in Monday through Friday, the everydayers. And if you enjoy Locked On Bucks, then I really do think you're also going to enjoy Locked On Sports today because Locked On launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports today is here for you with 24-7 coverage of the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On plus our national shows that cover every league. So make sure you find Locked On Sports today. And it's available now as well on the free Fire TV channels app. Now, Frank, I mentioned a couple of things that stood out to me in the blowout with the, the Dame and the Giannis alley connection and just finding just curiosity and just interest in point guard pack content still being a thing. Is there anything that stood out to you in this blowout loss that you want to highlight? Blowout win. Community. I'm sorry. Blowout win. How blowout dare win. I? How dare Positive I? Positive vibes here. Um, <laughs> Hey, Pat Connaughton, only one out of five from three, but and, and he did, he did miss somehow a miss a dunk, but he did have a different. He had another dunk, so that's good. That's number three on the year. Nine points, five assists, three rebounds, three steals, plus twelve. Love to see uh, our bench guys, Pat and Bobby. Bobby filling it up again. Twenty-one points, plus thirty-four in twenty minutes. Yeah. Um, so you know we've been used to the starting five having to kind of basically build big leads and then the bench units um, kind of giving those away and, and basically having to survive the non-starting five units. So I love seeing kind of those core bench guys showing up as positive. Pat Bev, plus 13, three assists. Again, only three out of eight. But um, we did see him drop a, a too small, which, you know, every time he does it, it's like almost insulting to the idea of a too small He's uh, he really is just one of the best trolls in the game. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think again, like they didn't need a ton from Giannis and Dame Giannis, 24 points in 24 minutes, um, seven of eight free throws. Suddenly his free throw shooting since like the fourth quarter in Minnesota has taken a nice little turn after a pretty sustained period of, of not looking so great. Um, so, you know, again, Giannis just kind of efficiently doing what, what he needed to do uh, that last bucket he had where he just sort of, Spun baseline on Oof. Miles Bridges, who, by the way, was a minus 48 tonight. Miles Bridges tried to do some garbage time stat hunting, played 37 minutes uh, deep into the fourth quarter. But uh, screw you, Miles Bridges uh, and Giannis dunking all over him for his last With basket. Uh, that was a, a beautiful little finish from from Giannis. So uh, but yeah, I, mean, I think just up and down the roster, you know, A.J. Green got in, hit some shots, hit some threes. Um, you know, he mentioned, obviously, Pat. Uh, Pat, 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 and Bobby, uh, Danilo Gallinari finally got a bucket, uh, you know, in, in some of his time, again, I'm not necessarily sold on Danilo Gallinari as a regular member of the, uh, of the yeah. nightly rotation. I think hopefully that will be addressed by, by Chris coming back, knock on wood, uh, fairly soon. Um, so yeah, I think just kind of up and down 
a roster, you know, like there's just not much, you know, to complain about. I mean, even Brooke Lopez didn't make a shot, zero points, one rebound in 23 minutes. No, by the way, he was plus 33 and his interior defense was terrific. I thought, right. I mean, you yeah. know, that was one of the kind of main reasons why the Charlotte Horns couldn't, couldn't score inside, couldn't score anywhere was because what Brooke was doing around the basket. So, um, yeah, I know. I think just in general, just a, a feel good win. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sort of straining to find any real negatives here. Uh, and I think the only thing I'd find is, is Charlotte managing to finally make some threes and score 36 points in a meaningless fourth quarter. So, um, yeah, no notes. Let's keep it rolling. And again, uh, you know, even if, uh, the, the kind of final score was, was a laugher again, nice to see Dame stat line as well at eight of 14 mm-hmm. back to back above 50% shooting games, four of nine from three after four of eight last game. Um, and nine rebounds, seven assists. He's been rebounding. He's been, you know, threatening triple doubles here these last few games, which is good to see just from an overall engagement standpoint. And Dame was plus 41 tonight. He was plus 37 (laughs) in Philly the other night. So he is a plus 78, uh, in the last two games alone. And as we mentioned in the last, uh, last pod bucks have four of their top seven half court defense performances or had four of their top seven defense uh, half court defense performances in the last six games. Well, now in their last seven games, they have five of their top eight or five, maybe five of their top seven, but um, they had another great half court defensive performance tonight, right around 82, 83 points. And uh, you know, right up there again, in terms of uh, lowest point total for the season overall allowed. So um, again, you know, what does this mean for their defense in the playoffs against the Boston Celtics? I, I don't know, but right. uh, the offense or the, the regular season is obviously largely about building good habits um, and building, you know, again, uh, a base of, of what you can take to the playoffs. And this is obviously a team that didn't have an identity defensively, you know, through the, the Adrian Griffin era and uh, solely, but surely, you know, it just feels like we're seeing the night to night consistency get much closer to, to where, uh, certainly Bucks fans would have wanted it to be. And obviously with the offense coming alive a bit tonight as well. Um, nice to see a game. Nice to see an uncompetitive yes. uh, basketball game. And hopefully we have uh, another one coming up on Thursday. But again, not to get too far ahead of ourselves. Um, you know, again, we know this team has, has found ways to disappoint when uh, when they've had games that you, you think that they should take care of. But um, certainly tonight, that was not a problem. Yeah, the only thing negative I can say about the day when the Bucks have a win this big after we've been talking about wanting to see them stack success, after we've talked about wanting to see them take care of business against teams they should take care of businesses. The first thing for me, uh, Giannis played, what, 24 minutes, had 24 points in 24 minutes. I prize picked today, Frank. I thought that Giannis was going to get at least 30. That didn't happen. So, you know, that's the only part of my prize picks that didn't hit. So that's too good. They were too good. They didn't need to sell. Too good. But listen, if it's coming at the expense of me losing money for a Bucks win, I will always take the Bucks win over that. And the other piece of it, I would say, just not great news tonight. It's looking around the rest of the Eastern Conference. Right. Was looking at the Cavs Mavs game, just keeping my eye on the score. And I'm like, okay, the Mavs should be able to pull this off. Next thing you know, Max Schroes hits a crazy half court buzzer beater, which gives the Cavaliers the win. The Bucs aren't able to make up extra ground on the Cavs. The 76ers lost to the Celtics, which expected. I don't think that the Bucs can can catch the Celtics or will catch the Celtics, but the Pelicans did defeat the Knicks. So at least the teams behind the Bucs didn't make up any ground. towards the Bucs, but the Bucs weren't able to really make up any additional ground against the teams ahead of them in the standing. So something that Justin and I have been talking about where we think the Bucs can land, Justin's more so in that three seed. I think they still can catch the two seed, but in your opinion with tonight and just looking at the upcoming games here, do you think, where do you think the Bucs can finish this season out if they continue playing some good basketball? I think so. I think they're capable of getting to, to second. Um, Again, would you favor them to get there? Probably not, just because of the difficult schedule and the fact that, you know, Cleveland's been playing generally good basketball. Uh, They did drop a few here of late with Donovan Mitchell in particular out with an illness. I think he was back tonight. Um, So, again, I think um, just cross your fingers that 
Cleveland falls into a bit of a rut. And obviously, you just have to hope that the Bucks can uh, kind of continue to build on the success they've been having. Won't be easy given the teams that they've got coming up, um, especially next week. Uh, mm-hmm. But again, the rest of this week is, is an opportunity with uh, the Hornets and then going into Chicago on the second night of the back-to-back. Uh, Bulls tonight lose to the Pistons. Bulls shoot two of 29 from three. I think it was one of the worst. I think, was it the worst uh, three-point shooting performance in NBA history? It was close, if not the worst. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and guess they're not going to dial up the same for the Bucks right. on Friday. So, um, yeah, I mean, we've seen it. Bucks have lost a game in Chicago already this year. So, um Again, show me, show me something, Bucks. Go, uh, go, prove to me that you know you're taking every night seriously, and um, certainly when you're playing at a higher level defensively, that again raises the margin of error pretty significantly. In terms of um, you know if your three point shot isn't working, then you know if you defend at the level they've been defending, then you're going to give yourself a chance. So um, hopefully everything clicks on Friday night and Thursday night, and they can kind of start this next more difficult uh, segment of their schedule. I think they have the Clippers, I think, um, early next week. I think that may be the next uh, game after these these next yeah. two. So um, that's obviously going to be a great test given how well the Clippers have been playing. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited for that game. But eye on the prize, Camille. I'm excited for another matchup with the Charlotte Hornets. I'm excited <laughs> to see the Milwaukee Bucks continue to build on the success they've been having. Don't let me down, Bucks. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now we did mention the fact that tonight's game, Brooke Lopez, you look at the stat sheet and you see that there were no points, uh, you know, one rebound, one assist, but he did have two blocks and him getting those blocks helped moved him up in Bucks history. So want to shout out Brooke and talk about if he can actually grab that number one spot in Bucks block leader history uh, after this. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what helps keep your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, LED headlights, exhaust kits, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with the eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guarantee Fit is only available to U.S. customers. All right, back at it. Brooke Lopez is now the Bucks' second all-time leader in blocks, up to 805, I believe now. Giannis is first with 966 blocks. Now, of course, both of these guys are playing together at the same time. Uh, do you think that Brooke can catch Giannis uh, in that number one category when it comes to blocks? Um. So it's an interesting question. I mean, basically, Brooks been you know between two and three blocks per game. Giannis has been around one block per game. So you know, if you say he's making up, let's say uh, aggressively, like one and a half blocks per game for every game that they both play. Uh, hopefully, they both are are durable. So you'd have to say, what does he have to make up? 160 blocks. Um, you know, you're talking about at least a couple years in order to to make up. Um, you know that, or I'm sorry, if it's 160, that's about one and a half. So maybe like 100 and 120 games, something like that, if you kind of prorate it out. So Brooks only under contract for one more year beyond this. So again, given where Giannis is in his career and and the likelihood that obviously he's going to play, knock on wood, for a very long time, hopefully in Milwaukee, hopefully Brooks here for quite a number yeah. of years as well. Um, I'm going to say it's going to be very hard for Brook to. A, to catch Giannis, and then B, even if he caught Giannis, you'd expect Giannis to be here longer and and to continue kind of piling up. So I would be very surprised if Giannis is not the all-time shot-blocking leader for the Milwaukee Bucks when uh, he hangs up uh, his Zoom freaks. 
Um, but again, hopefully he will have uh, been able to build a quite a comfortable margin by the time that he's uh, he's doing that years and years and years and years and years and years and years from now. Yeah, I just shout out to Brooke that. anyway. Shout out to him. Like honestly, I just think about like this era of Bucks basketball and the play that we've been able to see. Just thinking back to the Bucks basketball that we were watching even 10 years ago um, and where this team is now, it's, it's just been really fun seeing some of the guys who have really defined this era of Bucks basketball continue to climb up the record books between Brooke and these blocks, what Chris has been able to accomplish with the three pointers made in Bucks history, as well as him climbing up in the all time points leaderboard, what Giannis has been able to do just pretty much going for the number one spot in every category uh, that he can grab. It's just been really fun to watch. Even seeing Malik Beasley make the record for the Bucks' most uh, games with at least five three-pointers made. It's just really fun enjoying some of the guys we've been able to see come through, watching them play, enjoying Bucks basketball. Um, it's been something that I've enjoyed. And Brooke Lopez, like you mentioned, only only under contract for one more season. Uh, I hope that Brooke Lopez can retire a buck, but understand that it is a business. But I just enjoy being able to really enjoy this era of Bugs basketball for what it has been because it's been consistent winning, even though it comes with expectations. And sometimes those expectations can feel really heavy because it changes how you're watching the game when your mentality is championship or bust. But just being able to take a moment really look at what's been going on here and appreciate the play we've been getting is something that uh, I definitely enjoy doing. And I don't take any of this basketball for granted, even when it's frustrating at times, like it was at points earlier in the season, I do try to just enjoy every game, every moment, uh, because at some point these guys are going to hang it up or they won't be a buck. And it's going to be a different team. that you're going to get used to, you know, get comfortable with fall in love with so on. So just want to take some time and shout out Brooke uh, for climbing up in the record books here. Now, the Bucks' next game, as we've mentioned, is against the Hornets in Charlotte this time. And you mentioned it like, yay, we don't need it to be another 30-point win. We just need a win, maybe 15 or so. But it would just be really funny if the Bucks could find a way to <laughs> increase the lead um, in another Hornets win. But not looking to get greedy here. Just want another win here on the first time of the back-to-back. -back. But uh, Doc did mention in his post-game conference as well that Chris Middleton is close. He's not sure if Chris is going to travel with the team on this upcoming road trip um, to Charlotte and then to Chicago. And it's not he was saying because, you know, Chris is so far away, but actually because Chris is so close. And it might make more sense for Chris to just get his rehab done here in the city, not travel with the team so that he can be ready to go pretty soon. So it does seem like the return of Chris Middleton is coming up soon, although it probably won't be uh, during this weekend's upcoming back to back. Yeah, I don't know if I buy that spin uh, <laughs> in terms of uh, uh, going for it. <laughs> He's, he's not playing because he's actually too close. He's too healthy to be playing right now, Camille. Um, yeah, look, I, I get it. You don't want to risk him uh, in Charlotte. Obviously, you're not going to play him on a back-to-back -back coming off the injury, given you realize he's been playing back-to-backs all year. Um, but, I mean, I would prefer if we were hearing that Chris Middleton was going to play in one of these games because he's totally healthy, and why yeah. hold him out? But um, Obviously, if you can keep stacking wins, no one's going to be too worried about it. Um, and certainly if they keep playing like they have, then you'd expect it not to be a problem. But, you know, again, road back to back. Again, never want to take anything for granted, even when you're playing well. Um, always possibly hit a banana peel, have a game where, you know, your team's just missing a bunch of shots and the other team yeah. maybe <laughs> is making them. So uh, obviously Chris is a guy that gives you that extra um, kind of safety release valve gives you that extra margin for error offensively in particular. So I would love to see Chris uh, in Chicago on Friday, maybe whether that happens. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, but you know, Hey, even if he doesn't come with them to Charlotte, you know, jump on the, jump on the Amtrak down to, uh, <laughs> down, down to Chicago <laughs> on Friday, I would rejoin the team uh, and uh, maybe get in some work on Friday night. Yeah, we'll see how that shakes out for the Bucks, but we'll wrap up here. That'll do it for us today on this episode of Locked On Bucks. Again, make sure you go to Locked On Sports today and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. And for Frank and myself, we're going to catch you later. Have a good one, everyone.